tight top EU stories from the unit website include EU to cut mobile data roaming price caps from 1st of July an EU naval force operational headquarters welcomes European Union military committee EU article 29 working party publishes a statement on the risk based approach to data protection and EU calls on Turkey to end Cyprus air and sea ban plus is there a role for the Christian church in the European Union it's Thursday 10th of July I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news EU to cut mobile data roaming price caps from July 1st. As of July 1st, 2014, the EU has cut the price caps for data downloads by more than half, and specific roaming deals will be provided to travellers according to a European Commission statement on its website. The price caps for data roaming will be 20% per megabyte down from 45 cents per megabyte a year ago, and that means it will become much cheaper to use maps, watch videos, check mails and update social networks while travelling across the EU. Of course, what we are seeing here is a blatant abuse of free market economics. So, whilst on the one hand, a nation state members like the UK can't build set market costs on the Hinkley C nuclear reactor, but the EU on the other hand can simply rock up and price fix a la mafia style cartel of the EU executives, that's the unelected, I mean, um, the EU's executive arm, and it calls this market harmonization. Fatally, this story, which we picked up from the mainstream media, is not being even handed with its reporting. EU Naval Force Operational Headquarters welcomes European Union Military Committee. The Operation Commander of EU Naval Force Somalia Operation Atlanta, Rear Admiral Bob Tarrant and his Deputy Rear Admiral Bartholomew Bowser, welcomed the Chairman, Director General and 35 military representatives of the European Union Military Committee to the Operational Headquarters in Northwood. The European Union Military Committee, the EUMC, is the highest military body set up within the Council. It directs all military activities and provides the Political and Security Committee with advice and recommendations on military matters. Now don't be fooled folks, this isn't what it looks like. The European Union is not trying to create a federal superstate with its own constitution, <coughs> Lisbon Treaty, its own bank, <coughs> European Central Bank, its own army, European Union Military Committee, its own flag or its own national anthem. Now come on folks, don't get carried away with conspiracy theories, let's stick to the facts. EU Article 29 Working Party publishes statement on the risk-based approach to data protection. So on May 30th, 2014, the European Union's Article 29 Data Protection Working Party adopted a statement on the role of risk-based approach in data protection legal frameworks, or WP281. The Working Party, made up of EU member state national data protection authorities, confirmed its support for a risk-based approach in the EU data protection legal framework, particularly in relation to the proposed reform of the current data protection legislation. So, however, with a view to set the record straight, the Working Party also addresses its concerns as to the interpretation of such an approach and sets out its key messages on the issue. The Working Party sets out examples of its application in the current Data Protection Directive 9646EC and the proposed General Data Protection Regulation. EU calls on Turkey to end Cyprus air and sea ban. The EU called on Turkey to implement the additional or Ankara protocol which would require the Turkish government to remove all discriminatory obstacles towards Cyprus as a member state. The Turkish ban on Cypriot air and sea traffic is a major aspect of the protocol and the delay in implementing it for Cyprus has since 2006 prevented any movement on eight chapters necessary for Turkey to move forward with its EU accession. Now, Cyprus also raised the discrimination against its citizens travelling to Turkey, which has excluded the Cyprus Republic as an EU member state in its options for online applications, using instead the 
Greek Cypriot administration in southern Cyprus. On Monday, following the latest meeting of the EU-Turkey Association Council, a statement from the Council said that although it had noted the clear statement of Turkey's commitment to the accession process, the EU had made its position clear. <laughs> well, these Turkeys need to make up their mind. They're either in or they're out. They can't keep shaking it all about. This is the European Union, not the Okie Koki. Is there a role for the Christian churches in the EU? One of the main problems of the EU is an inherent one. It is a problem of being constructed in a particular way as well as behaving in a particular way. The EU suffers from a lack of self-reflection and the idea of not knowing oneself. The EU also suffers from a denial of failure. Its official discourse claims it's on the right track. The EU does not question what it has done so far and why it went wrong the EU has a cognitive problem that puzzles many of us. The Christian churches may ask for more room for reflection within the EU. In times where there is no time to waste on reflection, the church may take a lead in bringing spiritual values back to the agenda without, of course, repeating the mistakes of the past. Society has changed and it keeps changing. Churches follow these changes with an open mind. Today in our video library, getting down to the nitty gritty on Europe. So check out this video from YouTube with Daniel Hannan, Graham Watson and Nigel Farage debating some of the issues around the European Union. Now we picked this up from James Berry who shared it with us via Google+. Thanks James. And our comments? Well, look, you could talk round in circles all day long, but only one thing really matters. UK's continuation within the EU is to hand over all of your decision making to an at best a huge institution with which you have next to no influence and at worst an unelected bureaucracy controlled by 28 appointed elites who are dominated by multinational corporations and banks. The upside of course is then those people who say they don't vote because it doesn't make any difference will be right. Now James says, hello Rick, you are right. Let's get out of this mess. Don't give up. Uh, thanks, James. And we're doing our level best to figure out our funding problems right now. But in the interim, we're going to work as hard as we can to keep this show rolling. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.